<coughs> when we come against uh, or come across the, this bad madhab people on, on different posts and the comments that they leave, should we give them a comment back to, to help people from this, this deviation? InshaAllah it's probably best that you go about your way and keep your, your connection. You know the, the, if you see a hornet's nest and you're not somebody who's equipped to fight a nest of hornets. We, we did this when we lived on the east coast when a little bit younger and less, less intelligent. <laughs> we saw a hornet's nest and we hit it with a broomstick and thought I could run it out and they, they gave me a, a life lesson. <coughs> and then when we called the hornet nest people, the guy came with a whole uniform, came with helmets and gloves and I was like, oh that makes sense because if these hornets come it's not going to hurt him, he's equipped. And he had a poison in his hand so that he's extinguishing the problem. So in our life these people are hornets. They produce no honey, no sweetness. They are in existence just to sting and if you see the hornet they sting and they actually keep going around stinging people. They're not like the bee that if, if it uses as a precautionary move its stinger it passes away. It has one shot at defending itself. The hornet's existence is created to continuously sting and produce no sweetness and no, no honey. So unless you're somebody who's equipped to take on that type of difficulty and then replying and then spending all the time replying to ten of them and a hundred of them, most of us have no interest in that at all. So it's best that we understand that shaitan is playing there and move forward and continue our path towards our reality and our marifa. We have enough problems facing us in life that you don't have to find ten more that may multiply quickly to a hundred if they all come in and start to go after you and, and ask you questions that you're not capable of answering nor do you want to spend your time answering it. We absolutely reply to none of them and each one thinks he's more clever than the one who came before. We just ban them, we block them and we don't reply and they go into spam folders. If they're on the web pages they're immediately blocked. It's a shaitan and there's no need to deal with the shaitan. Walaykum as salaam Tama. <laughs> Question is asking that I, I want to give sadaqah and is it okay for my sadaqah to, to feed ants? to give like sugar to ants, to feed animals, creatures, uh, anything around. Alhamdulillah sadaqah is a, is a means in which to cleanse ourselves and rid ourselves of, of difficulties. So everything in its common sense to, to feed a human versus a, 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 a smaller creature, we don't understand then the importance of humanity. وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْنَ bani adam. The most honoured creation of Allah is Bani Adam. And if that creation is sitting next to you and is starving and, and hungry and there's a, another creature that not from that creation and that's starving and hungry, you have to understand with your common sense which one Allah is going to hold you to account. And that's the danger that you see these people that they give their wealth now to dog foundations and they give a billion dollars donation to dogs and there are people who are dying on the street, have no food, no water, there are children who are in, in horrific conditions around the world. Although shaitan came to them with something that appears to be noble, in reality Allah would ask that you didn't want to feed you know your brother and sister for every creation is your brother and sister in Allah's eyes, just from a different mother. So Allah is going to ask you that your closest of relatives means you're human and that why you didn't take of this humanity, why you didn't feed them, why you didn't uh, clothe them, why didn't you watch over them. And if you do that and in addition 
you put out in your house sugar in the backyard and seeds for the birds, this is all beautiful. But everything with its correct understanding, do I forego feeding a human being to go and give all my money to, to, to give bird food? I, I don't think it's advisable. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. <clears throat> if I go somewhere and my heart is beating fast, is it a sign that there's a negative presence around or that my practices are, are weak? <clears throat> Again that each person knows themselves what their practices are like. You know the answer of if your practices are weak or not. But what's important is that when you tune your heart and do your zikr and do your practices, your heart becomes a tuning fork. So if you've taken any music classes or music lessons in school, it's an instrument like a metal and if you hit it, it has a vibration. And the, the reality of the heart, it's an immense tuning organ. It's picking up vibrations, it's giving you vibrations by means of your heart Allah inspires humanity. Allah is in control of creation by their heart not their brain. That's how Allah controls creation, He's the owner of the heart. When anything you plan in life and 10,000 people plan their brain, Allah sends one is shot it into the heart and that plan is finished. He doesn't have to control the brain and compete with the nafs and compete with arguing with you. He's the controller of the hearts of, of creation. If He merely sends a signal into the heart, it will change everything the brain was thinking and say, I couldn't do it, I won't do it or I'm going to do it, doesn't matter what you told me not to do. So the final word always comes from Allah by, by power through the qalb. So the qalb then has an immense reality and is a very fine-tuned organ that once you begin to make your zikr, your meditation and build your energy, it's picking up vibrations. As a result, you have to be vigilant over the heart. If I walk into somewhere my heart is beating, there's an energy that's not appropriate in that environment. And I'm not supposed to build myself so strong that I should be able to walk into every bad environment. That is a safeguard that for me to step back and to each their level. When Allah knows the level of that servant, <coughs> there are energies in that environment that may not be good for you, the heart begins to palpitate. Or if they talk to people, <coughs> the emotion of the person that you're talking to once you perfect your heart, work on your heart, do the zikr of the zikrullah that's my qulub means the people of, of zikr it, their hearts are clean. As a result it's like a mirror. If somebody's nervous when they're talking to you, your heart is beating fast as if you're nervous. You say, I'm not even nervous, I don't know why my heart is beating like this. It's because you're picking up the vibration of the other person. They're nervous talking to you, they're angered when they're talking to you. So the heart begins to understand what Prophet described as that the person is a mirror to other people. So alhamdulillah, it's a, it's a good sign, you have to just keep the sensitivity of the heart, try your best to, to follow the inspirations of the heart and that we don't necessarily have to become stronger to tolerate every bad environment, that it's a sign for us to, to leave that environment if it's something questionable. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. The taweez around the neck, is it a prevention from nightmares? And then the second part of the question. 
once I sure and when I wear it for the first time is it okay if I feel anxious yeah we, we, we've talked before on the ta'wis and the reality of the ta'wis that anything from the heavens is a heavenly light and most people live their life with their desires and all that they have surrounded themselves with seen and unseen to them. So again we describe it's like you know uh, filled your house with homeless people and you thought that was a good idea and you brought them just come, come, come because every time we go out we're attracting all sorts of energies. Everywhere we go these energies attach themselves onto the body like a bus, they are wanted and unwanted passengers. So for sake of analogy you invited all these homeless people into your house and they're all living there making a mess of your entire life's environment. Now all of a sudden you decide that you want one day to bring the police because you made friend with a police officer. And as soon as a police officer walks into the house he sees these people and says, these are, these are all criminals. You know, I know these people and begin one by one, get out of here, get out of here and try to rid your environment of what you have brought into it. So it, it would be obvious that there's going to be a bit of difficulty because they're not going to leave willingly and they're not, they're not uh, interested in, in vacating something that they have or thought they had the right to occupy. And many of them occupy insan, insan's environment, the home, the <coughs> all the things that are coming through the home, through their music, through their TV, through everything that they do. So these, these creation of Allah if they're being forced out and pushed out then there can be all sorts of energies that are not comfortable and that's when somebody may feel an uncomfortable energy. Because one energy is from positive and heavens trying to push out every type of negativity. So when Allah described, قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقْ Say, O Haqq, when the truth comes it pushes away falsehood. And the truth and the falsehood they don't coexist in the same space. And falsehood by its nature is zahukan. So means when this lights of Haqq and heavenly lights come they actually begin to hit and destroy these falsehoods and makes them to be very angered and distressed and then there's a whole bunch of things that they have to, they have to leave. So that can be a bit of a process and a bit of cleansing. But alhamdulillah with dalal khirat, with the salawats, with good perfume, with your salah, your namaz, your meditation, play the zikr in the home and then the ta'weez is an added shield for the difficulties that are coming upon the earth inshaAllah. And this is all with Allah's might and majesty. And this from its understanding when people want to understand the dalil of it, Ruqya has many dalils from Prophet and to put Ayatul Kareem to call upon Rijalullah and the Salihin, Tanzil Rahmah brings a Rahmah. <coughs> and when Allah was going to send punishment to Bani Israel's Pharaoh in the time of Bani Israel when Allah was going to send punishment to Pharaoh, He gave a warning to Sayyidina Musa, tell your people to mark their door because the angels of punishment are coming, anyone who has that mark should be safe from the punishment of these angels of azab. Did the angels not know who they were? Of course the angels knew who they were. But Allah wanted to see if your people believe in you because Allah is all about verifying. So of course the angels know who to strike and not to strike, they see through walls, they have every type of understanding exactly to the soul of who that person is, what their destiny is. But Allah wanted to ask from Nabi Musa, see if your people believe in you because even how much they bothered you and asked you so many questions, if you tell them put the mark they say, oh we're not going to put the mark. And that's what Allah want to see, if they don't have the mark they're gone. And if they have the mark they should be safe and that mark till today has such an importance in their, in their belief. The mis misvah that they keep on every door of their homes and apartments. And this is uh, from Qur'an when Nabi Musa was taught that the Pharaoh was coming 
was uh, about to receive punishment that mark your doors so the angels of death pass them and the angels of punishment pass. So many times Allah will ask believers that if you believe then put the symbol of your belief and the turuqs they receive these isharats from the presence of Ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Muhammad that to put your people with this taweez, with these marking, this Allahu Haq, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and these words and recitations that put this upon their neck if they believe, alhamdulillah Allah's might and majesty to defend and to protect them. All protection is only from Allah and Allah tries His servant for those whom believe and rewards their belief and those whom don't believe then they don't believe and they bear the consequences of disbelief, inshaAllah. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Three times and the reality of three, that's something different. The, the benefits, the question is asking the benefits of reciting Surat al Yaseen at graveyard or gravesite, and should we recite it three times? What's the benefit of reciting it three times? It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of question in, in, in one, one question. The <laughs> easiest understanding is that all the tariqah's teachings of muhabbat and ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and what Allah want to bestow upon the students of this way and the students of tariqah and all the shaykh's teaching was to achieve this love of Sayyidina Muhammad and this way of marifa and it's in the heart of Sayyidina Yaseen which the name of Sayyidina Yaseen is Habibullah. That this Yaseen is dressed from the reality of Allah calling Prophet Habibullah. Sayyidina Taha is Rasulullah. So Yaseen is the Habib and love of Allah therefore he is the heart of Qur'an. So all this teaching to reach to the heart, to be dressed by its realities, to be dressed by every single uh, reality of Prophet emanating from the holy heart of Prophet Manzil al-Qur'an, the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So if you encapsulate all our teaching of the Muhammadan way, it's Surat Yaseen. That's why we have the book on the tafsir of Surat Yaseen. I would recommend that you read that book for its understandings just towards the ocean of the understanding of Surat al Yaseen. All of this Muhammadan haqqaiq is encapsulated by Surat al Yaseen. So, what Allah wanted for every single Muslim to achieve that dress, and that's why on their death you're supposed to recite Surat al Yaseen. They didn't achieve it in their world, they didn't achieve it in their life, they didn't achieve to sit with these Muhammadiyoon and to learn that greatness, to learn that reality at least by the recitation of Surat al Yaseen on their deathbed, their nafs is at its lowest point and they're about to meet and the release of their soul is about to come out to meet Allah That recitation is then dressed upon the reality of their soul from the dresses of Sayyidina Muhammad that their soul is leaving and departing with all these tajallis and realities of Surat al Yaseen to dress the soul so that they be greeted in the Divinely Presence of Allah under the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad So has an immense reality, immense reality to, to read it upon those whom are passing away, those who, who are at the graveyard, it dresses all of them from all of these haqqaiqs and realities. And that is the manzil of Qur'an and the house of Holy Qur'an where every emanation is coming from this Holy Surah and everything within Surat al Yaseen are all the secrets and realities of Holy Qur'an that is not even something that has a time on it and is of ancient realities. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these realities 
and to dress us from the holy nights of Rajab inshaAllah subhanahu wa bika rabbi izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al mursaleen wa hamdalillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.